In this video, we're going to do a quick overview of gradients and directional derivatives, and then in a later video, um, I'm going to go over some more detailed examples of each of these. Um, okay, <clears throat> so to start with, we have the gradient. And just to kind of talk about what this is, um, this tells you how um, a function of multiple variables, let's just say f of x, y for now, changes in each direction and it is given by the vector gradient of f x y is equal to partial derivative with respect to x in the x component and partial derivative with respect to y in the y component so <clears throat> generally speaking, this is just a vector that tells you how it's changing in each one of those directions, and there is a component for each partial derivative. So if we're working in a case where we have multiple, uh, more than two um, input variables, you're gonna wind up with that many uh, components for that many partials. And uh, also just a fun fact, this is just, I mean, it's an upside down triangle. Uh, it's called a nabla, which uh, means harp in Greek. Uh, not that you really necessarily need to know that. It's just kind of a fun fact. Um, but anyway, so this is the idea behind a gradient is that it's just another way to talk about the rate of change of f and how it's changing in uh, each of the different directions of its variables. So let's look at an example for this. Um, we can say that f of x, y, is equal to x y squared plus x cubed y cubed and uh, we're going to find the gradient of f so our gradient of f at x y is equal to the partial with respect to x and the x component partial with respect to y and the y component so all we have to do is find those two uh, partial derivatives so our partial with respect to x here is just going to be y squared plus three times x squared y cubed. And then the partial with respect to y is uh, going to be two xy plus three x cubed y squared. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to finding the gradient, okay? Now we have another notion of um, how much f of x is changing in a particular, or f of x, y is changing in a particular direction by using what's called the directional derivative. And uh, this tells you how much um, f is changing in the direction um, of a vector e. And um, before I show you the formula for this, I want to talk a little bit about uh, how we're going to get to that formula using all the different pieces that are in here. So when we talk about the fact that f is changing, this means that we're going to want to use the gradient of f. When we have this notion of in the direction of, we know that we're gonna see a dot product because that tells us how much two things have in common in a particular you know, direction or something. And then this last piece here is actually going to refer to a, um, a unit vector because we only care about direction, not length. So um, we've kind of put these three pieces together and what we're going to get for our formula for this is that the directional derivative in a direction E of f of x, y is equal to 
that vector E that we're talking about dotted with our gradients. Okay. And I really want to emphasize that unlike the gradient, this produces a scalar. Okay. So directional derivative is a notion of how much, and any time that we have an idea of how much, we're going to wind up with a number, whereas the gradient tells you directions of change, so then you wind up with a vector. So let's look at an example for this as well. So if we look at this just the same function that we did earlier, f of xy is equal to xy squared plus x cubed y cubed. And then uh, we want to know about the directional derivative in the direction of a vector v equals negative 3, 4. Uh, we'll compute the directional derivative. So our formula is the directional derivative in the direction of E of f of x, y is equal to E dotted with our gradient of f. Well, we computed our gradient of f earlier. Um, we said that that was equal to the vector x, y squared plus 3x squared, y cubed, um, and then 2xy plus 3x cubed, y squared. So what about this vector e? Well, we know that we want this to be a unit vector, and we want it to be in the same direction as v. So this is a unit vector in the direction of v. So what this means is that we're going to want e to be equal to just a normalized version of v, which means that we take v and divide it by its length. Um, <clears throat> so length of v is going to be, you know, 1 over root uh, negative 3 squared plus 4 squared, and then multiplying that by uh, negative 3, 4. So we're going to have 1 fifth, negative 3, 4. And um, for the sake of convenience, I like to just leave this, uh, this scalar, this multiplied um, part just out here. I don't really like to multiply it in until the very end um, when I'm simplifying down. If even at that point, sometimes it's better to just leave it here. So um, we're just going to leave that right there. But anyway, at this point, we're now ready to plug in the vector v that we're going to use because this just gives us the direction of v and kind of uh, ignores its length, and then we want to take that dotted with f. So our directional derivative for f x y is going to be equal to one fifth times negative three four, and then that's dotted with our gradient here x y squared plus three x squared y cubed, and then two x y plus 3x cubed y squared. Okay, so to get this, I'm going to have 1 fifth, and then that's going to be negative 3 times this first component here, xy squared plus 3x um, squared y cubed, and then plus 4 times the second component, 2xy plus 3x cubed y squared. I'm going to close the larger parentheses there. Um, and that's uh, pretty much all there is to this. Notice that all of these pieces are being added together. There's no more individual components. So that what we are going to get at the end, if you were to plug a point in, would just be a number. It would not be a vector. And um, I know it's kind of a, a common question, okay, how much simplification am I supposed to do or something like that? Um, if we look at each of these pieces, you can kind of tell that none of these terms with the x's and the y's are going to be able to combine any further, like there's no x, y squared anywhere in here, and there's no x squared, y cubed anywhere in here either. So honestly, since there's not really any like terms we would be able to combine, at this point we can actually just leave them, leave it written just as it is. There wouldn't be any point in distributing the negative three or the four or the one fifth or anything. It's really not going to get any simpler than it is. Um, so this would be our answer right here for the directional derivative of f, y, f x, y in the direction of v equal to negative 3, 4. Um, in my next video, um, actually next couple of videos, I'm going to go into a little bit more 
um, detail on some examples working with the gradients and then also with the directional derivative. So uh, for further clarification, please see those videos as well.